This is, in a nutshell, is an overview on ISAGO. It's a general overview. Uh, I know it is for all of you from the GAC department. Anybody from ground handling giving a full scope or just GAC? So, with this, it's going to give a full picture, including the ground service equipment. I will start with the introduction. IATA Safety Audit for Ground Operation. It is a standardized and structured audit program of ground service provider. There is no other program. That's the only structure and standardized program to audit ground handlers. It is internationally recognized operationally, and the audits are conducted by highly trained and experienced auditor. We will come to that part to talk to you about how we train the auditors and what procedures are needed. For the ground service provider, the handler, it provides a model of operation risk and safety management. This is the first system that when somebody is audited is registered on our website. This is the only uh, program. Again, first and foremost, IATA major initiative is safety. And the key goals are to reduce ground hazards, aircraft ground damage, human factor, personnel injuries, security, and the most is also the redundant audit. We want to avoid redundant audit. Why are we doing it? Because nobody else can. I don't, I don't want to be arrogant on that part. But let me tell you something. The fact is a global, experienced, fast-acting organization like IATA, which has eight, almost 800 audits of operational safety of airlines under its belt. It is the only body that can plan and execute ISAGO. When we talk about ground damage, everybody refer to aircraft ground damage. And this is really cost the industry $4 billion a year. Those are hard costs. However, our 230 airline members emphasize that those ground damage, aircraft ground damage, is a big concern. They are affecting their bottom line. It's a lot of money in there. Not talking about the indirect cost, that those could be measured also in multiples. If we look at them, we have most important is health factor, personal injuries and death, this at no cost, safety, you know? Loss of revenues and crew cost. Station managers face hotels, meals, reprotection of passengers. The chaos goes upstairs when, when delays occur on such an, I mean, we all been traveling, we are all in the industry, and we see that when a delay occur like that. And then is the airline reputation. Because the passenger says they don't think, they don't know who's the ground handler. They all relate always to the airline. Oh, US Air, uh, Northwest, KLM, whatever, delayed, delayed, canceled. They don't know how to, you know, it's bad reputation for the airlines. I say go, the audit program derived, drawn from this. The current situation right now is, if you, if you remember the first slide, we say avoid redundant audits. This is the current situation right now. Airlines, they send their auditors in herds to go and audit their suppliers. The ground handler get the audits from every customer airlines they have. 
One of, lately, uh, I received an email from one of the ground handler in Europe that he told me that he been audited 150 times last year. I mean, this is too much. Look at the resources. Look at the time spent. What I say go is different. Look at airlines. They go and audit the ground service provider. They are in the pool. They join the pool of ISAGO. They can share those audits. So airline A goes and audit ground handler C. Airline D doesn't need to go there. It gets the report from the registry, from the IATA website registry, that would reduce the audits. The, uh, and the sharing part, it, it, it is a benefit also for the airline as well as for the ground handler. The regulatory, need it be civil aviation, need it be airport authorities, are interested in the ISAGO program because they would like to improve safety on the ramp. And regulators hold airlines responsible for oversight on their ground handlers. They blame them. You are responsible of your ground handler. And then surprisingly, the airline struggling to obtain consistency on, on, on the services being given to them. The model of ISAGO. All right, let me explain this before we go into corporate and stations audit. Ground handlers, to be on the ISAGO registry, they have to perform a corporate audit and a station audit they have to close all the findings, and there is a time limit on that, six months to close the audit, the gaps. I mean, and then they will be on the registry. So, as we know, ground handlers have a head office and a station. The corporate audit is conducted by an audit organization. It's an independent audit organization accredited by IATA to audit the headquarter audit. We always do, and we always try to do the corporate audit and then do the station audit. So therefore, the station audit comes after the corporate audit and the station audit is audited by a pool airlines, ISEGO pool member airlines. They're normally after that and both the headquarter and the station audit is on two year cycle. How to do the audit, how to prepare to the audit, we'll come to it at the later slides and we'll explain how to do it. Any questions so far on that slide? Any, any clarity needed? All right. How to do the audits? How, how long would it take? For the headquarter audit, one man day could be day and a half that the audit organization doing the headquarter audit. For the station audit, on a full scope, full scope meaning station management, meaning baggage, passenger, handling, aircraft movement, cargo, mail, everything, the full scope of that is three days, three man days. Now, some ground handlers have probably limited scope to be audited. It won't take three days. I don't need to send, I mean, the airline do not need to send three men to do the three days. So it, it reduces. The registration. This is the part where redundant audits the solution for it is the registration being on the registry. When you complete, when the ground handler completes the corporate audit in one station, as I said, closing all the findings, then the ground handler will be on the ISAGO registry. The corporate audit 
as I stated before, it's first before the station audit. And then on the registration of the GSP, we'll specify stations audited. How many stations? For example, I'll give you like Swissport, like Menzies, like Avia Partner. They do have a headquarter and they have different stations around the world. It doesn't mean when I audit the headquarter of Swissport, let's say, or Menzies, and one station that means all of Swissport gone under ISAGO audit. No. Zurich station, uh, Zurich headquarter, Zurich station is audited, those that will be on the registry. Now, if they have Las Vegas station audited, then close all the findings, then they will go on the registry. So it is very specific. And also it will show you the scope has been audited. And what? He was audited on handling, he was auditing on baggage, cargo, load control. It will specify that. So that will help a lot also for the airlines when they want to go and open up a station. They can go on the registry and find out that, okay, uh, such and such a handler, they give such and such a service, I can share the report, I can visualize, I can be there and select that ground handler. So we go back to say that ensure, uh, before we start ensuring, you know, the reports and keep it in secure environment because IATA is the custodian of that report. We hold that report. That report is only be shared by the pool member airlines only. If you are not on the pool member and you, you didn't sign the interim agreement with us on confidentiality and everything, you will not be allowed to have that report. And to be on the registry, I repeat again, it's to have a corporate audit and the station audit, both close finding. And I said again, the time frame to close the audit is six months. If, let's say, I XYZ ground handler did the ISAGO audit, he did not close the report within six months, he's out. He has to go back and apply for another audit, for a fresh audit. This is how the registry looks like. It's accessible. You can look at it. It's on our website. You can see who is audited where, but you cannot get the report unless you are a pool member. And the registry goes by, you can see it by search, by the ground handler name, by an airport code, or you can go for a company put the name of the country and they'll tell you who are the, the ground, so the, the handlers are there. Now, we go to the documentation. This is, those are the documents that we perform the audit against, that we use them for the audit. And especially is the standard manual. This standard manual is for the ground handler and it's downloaded free of charge. It's on our website. And it's meant for the ground handler to prepare his audit. There's a checklist in there so he would know what to prepare and what to expect, what's coming to him. Now for the program manual and for the handbook, those are for the auditors. Those are the bylaws, the conditions, the law, what to do in case of something. The philosophy of the ISAGO standards and recommended practices, it contains specification necessary to audit the ground handler, and it's based on the IOSA standard. I don't know if some of you are familiar with IOSA, what IOSA is. IOSA is another audit program for operational. It's only for the airlines. I will explain that to you on the other slide, just I don't want to lose your tracks on that. That program started before ISAGO. And it's such a successful program, so we touch the operation side and now we touch the ground. And if all of you are the same age as me, you know, and remember the Beatles, ground control to Major Tom, so that's it. That's IOSA and that's ISAGO. Uh, we focus on the compliance and the requirement of the customer airline address 
continuity provider management system from the corporate level line. What does it mean? If, if, if we're reading this, what does it mean? In the corporate audit, what do we see? In the corporate audit, when we audit a corporate audit, we look at documentation. We want to see those documentation. Uh, okay, fine, and what would you do on the station audit? The station audit, we look at the implementation. It's well documented. You have your training records in place. You have your quality assurance in place. You have your emergency response plan in place. Show them to me, not to me, to the auditors, I say, and they would look at it. And then, okay, this has been transmitted to the station? Yes. Okay, fine, thank you, we'll go to the station. Station, show me what do you receive as instruction from your headquarter? Where are they? Here they are, documented, yes, which date, number. This is the audit, and then on site. We go outside. That's why ISEGO is so granular. When you have a chance, it's free. Download the standard manual, see the checklist, see where we go on that. That, that will give you a wider horizon on that part, and to see what ISEGO really is. How did we come up to those standards? Did it, they didn't come up from night to day. How, how did we do it? What we did is we called upon a ASI, Air, the uh, Airport Council International. We called on ground handlers. We called on airlines. We called on regulators, uh, IATA experts. And then we get them all together. We draw the standards. We formulated the standards. And as you can see, the first one is from the AHM. You're familiar with the AHM, the Airport Handling Manual, which is the, right now the document for the ground handler to look how to do it, when to do it. So we integrated that. We took other relevant IATA manuals, which is the dangerous goods manual, the live animal, the security, the airport. And then we went to the ISO. We, the industry manuals, we integrate them on the standards as well. Because ISO do have a quality, you know, they do quality assurance, but do not check the implementation, what is happening on the ramp and what is going on on the ramp. That is the, we brought them in just to take a little bit on the uh, quality performance. Like, we need the industry to work with us and we work with them. We went to ICAO for the annexes. What's in ICAO annexes? ICAO annexes are 17 and 18, the security, security procedures. And then we reach our hand to the Europeans. What's going on in your area? Tell us, you know, what, what can we put in there? And then the FAA. It is the industry proven best practices, I say. We have everybody there. So we didn't leave anybody out on dry. It's an involvement, it's a contribution, it's a teamwork. If you can see up, it's the standard on the, we're already on a second edition. IATA is to maintain the manuals, to work on the manuals, and in order to keep the program responsive, we work hard on how to amend and how to move forward. What happened? We first took 40 audits that happened. We made the quality control, the quality assurance. We looked at them. We saw the synergies going across. And we find out that needs to be amended. So we sat down. We amended it. And we brought in the second edition. Why we did that? It is to facilitate, to reduce the number of man days where the airline complaining is too long. ISEGO is very granular, touches every single corner. It's too long. So we find out not to be touching on the station, but it was between the OMS, what we call it, the corporate, the headquarter, and the station, there were some overlapping standards. We cut that, it's about 20% cut off on that part. So brought down the standards 
from 486 standards, we brought it down to 375. So we shrank about 20% on that part. And we come in, we wanted to use, we need to cut cost as well, because later on I'll explain to you there is a cost involved on the audits that we move towards the airlines. And the reason for that is to facilitate the corporate audit and the station audit to be done by an airline. Because doing the corporate audit and moving down to the station audit, and you do have to have type of link to know what's happened in the corporate will happen in the station. So the, the, the auditor will have a better vision on that. And the company provides a single call. We started with the ORM, Organization and Management. We looked and we said, okay, fine. A station, a ground handler A, give only service at his station, one station. So we call this co-located. So we send the airline auditors to perform the audit. So they will go there, they will perform the headquarter and the station. Before it was the audit organization doing the headquarter and the airline doing the station. So this is an improvement already. This is the scope of audits that is in the standard manual. As I stated before, section one, ORM, corporate and station audit. I'm sorry, I'm turning my back. So that's what been discussed before. Now, if you look at it, now where we are from the GAC, we're sitting in here listening to your standard manual, program manual, other than handbook, but where we are, where, where, where I say go touches the GSE now. I'll give you one guess. If you look at aircraft handling and loading, there's a standards in there regarding the GSE as when and where. And then you look at section six, AGM, aircraft ground movement for the GSE. How do you operate? Show me how do you operate. So those are the two section touching the ground service equipment. Now, if you want, I can elaborate a little bit more on that to tell you what, how do we audit this? I am a, I am a GSE, or no, I'm sorry, I am a ground handler. I don't operate any GSE. When you come to audit me, what would you do? This is simple, not applicable. You don't perform the service. So what do you want me to tell you? It's not applicable. Okay, fine. I'm a ground handler and I outsource. Excellent. Where do you come for the audit? I'll check your maintenance record. Are you keeping an oversight? You're checking the maintenance record? You have documentations on that? That your maintenance records are up to date? Show me. Therefore, still touching whereby. Now, I am a GSE, I do, I am a ground handler, I do service the GSE. Now, I need to know your maintenance records, I know to need your operational procedures, and I wanna make sure that your quality assurance covers that. This is where we touch for the GSE on that part. Any questions before we move forward on that? All right. Ground control to major tone. What is IOSA? It's an audit of air operators, passengers and cargo. Well, this also combined with ISEGO. ISEGO is for the ground service providers, for the ground handlers. We have common elements between IOSA and ISEGO, as you can see. Safety and security of flight operation, ISEGO includes safety of ground operation personnel. Audit based on internationally recognized standards, both of us has it. Highly trained and experienced auditor to conduct audits, yes. We use the same auditors like the AOs, the audit 
organization which does IOSA. We use them to do ISAGO on the corporate level. Audit sharing, IOSA also have that system. And that's why I said we copied and we took from the success of IOSA to do ISAGO. It's a system of registration. If you recall that we both touched the same element, we touched the ground handling on aircraft ground handling, cargo, and security. But I also do not touch the ground handling activities. I say go so granular, goes everywhere on the ground and audit and check. Okay, now you do have an audit program. It's up and running. What are the benefits? Okay, what's, what's the bottom line for us? For airlines, we have to talk about three. Airlines, ground handlers, and regulators are the key players. For airlines, it's a reduction in ground operation, incident, accident. Look, this is the fundamental aim of the program. Audit sharing and system registration, as I told you on the registry. Cost saving. Fewer audits, sharing the audits, support outsourcing. That means an airline going to open up a station somewhere else. Before they go there, they look at the ground hand, they look at the airport and they see who is the ground handler in there. There's an audit report on him. Let me share that audit report, look at it, and it's feasible for me to operate there. For the ground service providers, it's a reduction of incidents on ground, reduction of personnel injuries standardization across multiple operation, reduction number of audits, as I said before, one ground handler has been audited 150 times, it's too much. Lower cost on resources on operation, I don't need to put some people just to chaperone, we say in French, huh? that to look after the others, and the most important, enhance company image. The benefit for the regulators, Look, it's, for them, it's a uniform of standards. They have interest to have ramp safety, huge interest. And to, to have improved control on the airport. Regulators, airport authority, they're interested on the infrastructure. Airport building, restaurants, uh, guiding lights, lights. The infrastructure of the airport. I say go complements their audits when they come to audit their infrastructure and things like that because I say goes for the ground handlers. Now, the regulators are happy that we came up with this program because they do have interest on ramp safety. With this prerequisite, this could be a prerequisite for issuing ground handling concession at the airport? Yes. Well, let's stop speculation. Let me tell you the news uh, that beginning of this year, we got two major airports came forward and they said, we are mandating ISAGO. Not we will mandate ISAGO, we want to mandate ISAGO now. Two major airports. Does anybody recall? Anybody involved on in that? Seattle, Tacoma International Airport, you want to operate on my ground, you have to have an ISAGO registration certificate. Second airport in Europe, Schiphol, airport in Amsterdam, mandating ISAGO. I mean, they start seeing the benefit out of it. They start seeing what ISAGO can bring to ramp safety. And so on. I have a list of regulators, like civil aviation authorities. They send us letters supporting the initiative of ISAGO supporting the safety. They send us those countries, they send us all letters of support. Airport, airport authorities. You start North America, Latin America, Africa, Europe, Asia Pacific. ISAGO made a big move in the world on that, on safety. Now, I'll move to the audit pool. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the audit pool concept on that part. We have contacted the airlines to come on board 
and form a pool. Once they form the pool, it's free membership for them to come in. We train IATA, trains their auditors free of charge. We accredit them. We sign an agreement between them that could, the benefit for them is to share the audit reports and cut down on cost. So this is the pool concept. This is the pool airlines joining ISEGO. We contact the airline. We show them the benefits. We tell them what to do. It's free of charge. They walk in. Now, for the time being, when we contact for the pool membership, it's free for our IATA members only. But doesn't mean the boss stop here. We are also looking. Our mission is safety. We are not segregating anybody or we're not keeping everybody outside. Our mission is safety, but we have to start somewhere. We start with IATA members, our IATA members. And then pool members conduct allocated number of station audit each year. Hmm how this has happened. Each, two, each year we have two meetings where we call our pool advisory group and oversight committee. And we ask the airlines, the pool member airlines, you are going, you have an audit plan for the year. You are going anyway to audit those stations. We would like you to nominate five stations which are priority stations that could be audited under ISAGO and they give us those five stations, and they will be auditing those five stations against ISEGO standards. Then the pool members are responsible for nominating experienced and qualified airline auditors and conduct ISEGO audit. I, we leave it to the airlines. If I said before three audit, three mandates, I mean three auditors, the airline has to qualify after the training we give when we accredit them to be in ISEGO auditors after the training, it's free of charge training for the airline, the airline start nominating an evaluator, a lead auditor, and an auditor. So this is their responsibility to nominate that. We will check that indirectly on our quality control and, quality, uh, and, and, uh, and our quality management on that part. So. The airline auditors under, as I said, and IATA are responsible that managing and administering and do the audit allocation. This is a juggling exercise, believe me. I want that station, no, I want that station, no. This station is for me, no, I will go to that station. It's a hell of an exercise. Those are our 40 member airlines as of February 2010 joined the ISAGO program, active in the ISAGO program. And their membership is free. We train the auditors, we accredit them, and then nominate them in, in, in a nutshell. So if you can see in North America, the Europe, Asia Pacific, it's still progressing. This is where we need more auditors on that I mean, more airline pool members to join. And more airlines we will have on board, it will facilitate even better and it will move faster the ISEGO program. Those are the airlines in progress in signing. And the other airlines are the interested airlines to become ISEGO. Are we okay till now? Any, any, any further question? No? Training. As I said, we developed the training materials, the training syllabus, you know, everything we put it. We train the airline auditors. It's free of charge. It's on our website. You can look it up. We also do have training for the ground handlers, which has come later on. Now, requirement for opening, but we do have, according to our program manual, this is for the airlines only, not for the ground handlers, only for airlines. We have on the ground uh, program uh, manual the prerequisite. Not, we don't take everybody from the airlines and say, oh, I want to be an ISAGO auditor. Whoa, 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 hold on. We go to the quality department. We would like to know if that particular person has a prerequisite. 
it's listed in our program manual what does he have as uh, as a background he should have operational background he should have done load sheet he should know what he's talking about and he should come from the quality insurance uh, assurance and he is to be an auditor we need an auditor from the airline i cannot take somebody else and qualify and put him as a as an auditor so there is a prerequisite for that the required errors will be audited he should have at least know where to audit and how to audit and also we will introduce the airline auditors to the IT software management which is called Q5 and that system is link the auditor of the airline with the ground handlers together electronically in order to close all the gaps and the findings and comments on the observation and be on the registry after closing everything so it's we train the auditors how to perform that how to do that and the courses are on the website as well they can look it now for the ground handlers we have courses as well we want them to gain knowledge about isego what is it how to prepare for it how to work on that IT management software, the Q5, and how to be on the registration and the audit sharing, everything we give them, the entire package. It's a three days course. There's a fee for it. It's on the website. It's not, it's not free like the airlines. Because the airlines, we give it to them free of charge because we use them to go on audit. We need to cut the cost down. So they are paying it indirectly but they're benefiting on it on the long run when they share the audits when they see they don't need to go they don't need to spend money on resources and go do the audit they could share it from the registry so for the ground service providers it's three days course they can apply directly on our website those are the places the training schedule listed on our website where they can go and apply for a course how to how they are we preparing their station for an ISAGO audit the program status i just want to give you a brief one on that as of february right now as i said we have 40 member airlines we have conducted 10 free information seminars across the world we had 650 participants from 70 countries so we're we, we're beating the drums around the world with those information seminars for ramp safety for ground handlers we have trained 280 auditors from 90 different airlines. However, out of the 280, we have 195 auditors from the pool member airlines, from those 40 airlines. We performed so far 150 audits since the launch of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. This program has started February 2008. We struggled so much to put the information seminars, train the auditors, develop the standards, and move forward. This is a hell of a job. And 2008, to reach 150 audits right now, that's, that's what I'm telling you, what is the program, and what the magnitude of that program will be in the future. The program, as I said, active in all regions of the world, 40 audits, 40% of the audits of the 150 are corporate audits. Do you know what does it mean? Like Swiss board, Menzies, you know the giants, they do have their headquarter, but how many stations? So if you look at 40% done out of 150, look at the response Isago will have in the future. This is the audit snapshots where they happened. When I said when the, the ground handler closed all the findings, he will immediately come to the registry. We have done 31 providers as of the update on the 16th of March. 31 providers on the ISEGO registry operating at 34 locations. We've done 150 audits. Now you're telling me 31 providers, 34 locations. Where are the rest? 
It's when the audit is conducted and the IT management software system start working between the auditors and the ground handlers. When everything is closed, then it comes to us, to IATA. And what do we do? We take the report. We start doing quality control on the report. What has been done? When we finish with the quality control on the report to see that everything has been highlighted, done, closed, properly, wordings and everything, we'll move it to the quality assurance. It's another check on the check to make the report viable. We make the report serious. So that's why the others of the 150 still under QC and quality assurance are IATA. It's not easy to release the report. We have to make sure it is safety. And this is the most important element. And that's what we are preaching about. 2009, our board of governors, the board of governors are the CEOs of the airlines. They literally run IATA, the CEOs of the airlines. And they came up with a target and they said, 2009, 80 target. We want to see 80 target. Do it. Yes. When we have invested lots of money, information, performing, bringing the standards and everything, we have done 109 audits in 2009. 47 are corporate, 62 stations. Also, the Board of Government, they don't only want to see that how many are. We want also to see the response of the regulators, if they are on board or not. So look what we gain. We gain 20 regulators formally supporting the program. And then we moved. We moved with the standard manuals, with the second edition. We need to reduce, streamline, harmonize. And that's what we did. That's the target, what we did. Planning for 2010, the allocation is driven by participant airline crew members. Those, they tell us which station, what priority they want to go, who's the ground hand that they want to audit, their customer. They have to be a customer for them. I mean, the, the ground handler provides service to this airline, so they want to audit him anyway, so they'll audit him against ISEGO standards. The aim is to have five audits, the audit team, participating airline, undergo ISEGO training, priority to GSP, clear in the corporate 2009. Now everybody wants to know the cost. This is yesterday in, in, in Los Angeles. Everybody at the end, when, when the cost came up, everybody opened the eyes. This was like a, an awakening. IATA would like to drive that cost down, would like, would like to take that cost away. But since we do the corporate, the head office station, uh, the, the, the corporate of the ground handler, as I said before, we bring an audit organization. And that orga audit organization charge $5,000 just to go there and do the audit. IATA, we are a nonprofit or of an organization. So whatever is charged, we pass to the ground handler. Hmm. Starting the program like that, the ground handler is a, whoa, these charges. This is going to be, this is, you know, it's going to be hurtful for us. Then we start facing problems between willingness and readiness. Willingness is the money factor, and then the readiness. Then IATA comes in and says, okay, fine, look, this is a safety program. We need to serve the industry. It is for the industry. It implicates everything. It has a human factor involved in it. Okay, let's cut the cost for 2009. We waived it. And you know the audit is a cycle of two years. That's for the corporate audit. Now, what we did is for 2010, we'll continue to finance it. But we will give priorities. Now, what did we do? We took off the $5,000, which is the fee, but we tell the ground handler, look, 
We took the $5,000, the fee, but you still have to pay for the travel and accommodation of the AO, the auditing organization. And there is a cap for it, $5,000 cap. If, let's say, the airfare ticket costs $6,000, plus hotel accommodation is jumping immediately. The, the, the bar rise beyond 5,000. We know, IATA, what we do, we do have audit organization across the world. We choose the uh, shorter distance, which can be saved on tickets, and, and, and make it feasible. We feel with the ground handlers, and then we make it doable to be done because if I want to send somebody to audit somebody else from, from the States, an AO, an audit organization from the States, he has to audit somebody in Australia. Can you imagine the, the price of the ticket? So you are automatically over the bar. So what we did, we managed how to send the AOs in order to keep it on that cap of 5,000. And now, IATA will, will, will continue to pay for it. Mm. Okay, so we decided to have a budget for 2010 to cover these fees for the audit organization. But we have given priority to, for the ground service providers, the handlers, they have came to ISAGO and said, I want to be audited, but due to resources of the airline, we couldn't audit them in 2009. We moved them to 2010. Those are given priority for the headquarter audit fees to be waived. But they still, I, I insist, they still have to pay for the hotel accommodation and transportation up to a cap. And then we have what left from the budget, we will allocate for the new ones that are coming forward. The station audit. The station audit, you know that the station audit, it's audited by airline auditors. So there is no cost inherent on that. The airlines pays their own way to go there. They pay for their own hotel. Means the, the ground handler does have to do nothing. Then we put an IT software management. There is a fee we have to pay. Like any Microsoft, when you buy something, you have to pay for it. So IATA pays for it. And then they start saying, whatever, if I am a multi-station ground handler that I have 100 station, I need to pay $250 per station. Again, we said, this wave completely. We, we take the bite. We took it away. Now, tell me, does the ground handler still have nothing, anything else? that we can cut? No. All what he has to do is apply for an audit and be on the registry and enhance his safety. We came also for another good benefit. I think this is very eye appealing and eye attraction and it opens up the eyes of every ground handler. We came with a decision and discussions with the insurers that anybody who goes and apply for ISAGO, get audited, be on the registration, the insurance company will give him a break because it's bundled. Now I know that XYZ ground handler comply with the safety standards. There, there is no safety standards existed before. Now those are the safety standards. They would like to see it and they, the, the insurers, that the insurance company we will look on lowering their premium, give them better coverage, and better claim handling. They would like to see less claims. Let's face it, they would like to see less claims. They would like to see not to pay money. You know, they're also supporting that. Get your house clean, organized, be on the safety track, and we'll help you out. That's the message from the insurance. And to validate that, we do have our risk management and insurance in IARA, and we put the ground handler be in touch with Carol how the insurance works out. And this is a message we've been giving it 
to all ground handlers approaching ISEGO for the audit, for the safety audit. We are very serious on that. And that will save the ground handlers money on their insurance premium. Now, IGOM. This is the elephant of the safety <laughs> audit organization. We should have developed the IGOM before ISEGO. We put the cart in front of the horse. IGOM means the IATA Ground Operation Manual. You're going to like this. This is for you guys. Because a ground handler has to abide, has to, when he signed his standard ground handling agreement, Annex B, that he will fulfill and he will go in accordance with the ground operation manual of the customer airline. Looking at one ground handler with 15 customer airline, he will have 15 manual on his shelf. Which one he's going to choose? What confusion is going to create to his ramp handlers? So, we have resurrected that IGOM because this is started in 2003, 2004, and we didn't have the money to start this program, and the airline in the background screaming, we want the IGOM, we want the IGOM, then we find the money, we are going towards, it is, it is recommended, and it's really pushed by the Board of Governors to do it. And what it will happen, that the airline will use the IGOM as their core set of requirement in the future. Am I clear on that part? I'll give you an example. Like, let's say Northwest, US Air, KLM, and Air France, handled by XYZ agent. And they come to him and says, I need so many cones around my aircraft, US Air. KLM came up. If he needs six, I need five. Oh, I need, I, need, I need only two. So what happened to the ground handlers? Oh, OK, now, which flight is coming? US Air, KLM, oh, Air France? Uh, which one I'm going to do? How am I going to train my staff to do it? On the pushback. Everybody has different way of pushing back the aircraft. Everybody has a different way of opening the cabin doors of the aircraft. And the poor ground handler has to sit down and say, I'm going to send training to do this. On, on KLM training to do that in Air France. Wait a minute. We'll harmonize all those standards. We'll come to an agreement. And that will be the standards to be used by everybody. We will make it unified into one. And that will serve the industry. And that has the eye opener first hailed by the ground handlers. We want to do it. The airline, they want to do it. And then when I, in it, a year ago, when I start talking about the IGOM, you should see the response from the airlines. You should see the response from the ground handler. Do it. We want it. Do it. It's good for our industry. And this is what's going to happen. We already formulated the task force. The task force was volunteered by the airline. The airline says, OK, we're going to send our uh, specialists on the ground operation people who really bring the structure and the contents of the manual, they will be yours. Have them. Let them develop. We took from the regulator. We took from the ground handlers. I already have 27 members coming in. We want to be on, your, on the task force to develop that icon. You see the need of that, how it's going to become. You no longer, as a ground handler, need to choose how to perform this or that. Sorry. Right. Bravo. Thank you for, for asking that question because on the task force, it's not only airlines, it's not only ground handlers, it's Boeing, it's Airbus, it's regulators are on board. I have a list. We went out and we invited everybody to come to the task force. They really applied. I got Boeing came in, I got Airbus already so far. I put the communique whew, a month and a half ago. 
I put the communique out. I already have 27 came in, including Airbus, including Boeing, including regulators, ground handlers, airlines. And still we are going to that because we have made phase one and phase two of the program. The program takes long to develop. Just want to let you know that. It takes a long time to develop. However, what we did, of course, what I did right now is I choose three elements to start with. I choose the cabin door, pushback, and communication. Then what we will do, we bring those to the task force, we'll have a meeting, we'll sit down, and we'll bring all the manuals out from the airlines, from the manufacturers, procedures from the authorities, and we will harmonize how to do it once for all. That's, that is the goal now, what we're doing with the IGO. And this deliverables on that part, because it's also Board of Governors push on that. The first deliverables will be at the end of 2010, but the IGOM will not be completed in general, not till the end of 2011, 2011. If just imagine how many standards, how many procedural elements are going to be harmonized. Just imagine that. And we're just on the tip of the iceberg on that. But the industry needs it. And as you said, you are right. We have to come to uniformity. This is the future for us. For airlines, those are the benefits to improve compliance, safety, reduce time cost. For the GSP, simplify work process and safety operation procedures, training cost. For all, the single industry standards. It will simplify the standard ground handling on the service level agreement and reduce cost. Simplify audit and inspection as well. You have one standard. It's a common standard. You go through it. You do it. Not everybody uses whatever standards he has developed. How are we going to work with that? Development of the ICOM will take account the relevant publications, such as the AHM, the aircraft handling manual, the IATA publication, Company manuals, airline and GSP, you see that? Manufacturers. And the, I just spoke about the task force. We said we started in 2009, deliverables by the end of 2010, and it's a board of governor priority. We'll move from this, how to schedule an audit. Any question on the IGOM? Because it's, it's my baby. I love it so much. So it's, I, I see future on that. Any questions on the IGOM before we move on? The IATA ground operation manual. And everybody would like to, my, uh, I will pass the presentation to Lisa. And if anybody has a copy from it, you want to contact me, I will be at your service. I, I will assist, participate, do whatever you want. How to, do, how to apply for an audit schedule? I'm a ground handler. I want to apply for a ground hand, you know, to be audited under ISAGO. Download the standard manual. As I stated before, the standard manual is free of charge. You can go ahead and download it. You can go on our website, pick it up, and it could be done. Familiarize yourself with the corporate management, and then if it's with the organization and management standards on that part. Just take the standard manual. Look at it. There's the checklist. See what you want to do. Find out what the gap analysis, how you are going to be ready. Just go through it. We don't want you just say, oh, I want to apply for an ISA, go audit. OK, fine. No, before you do that, just go download the standard manual. See where you are standing by now. Are you ready to do it? Because it's consuming. We bringing people, we bring AOs, Audit organization to do it. We put the airline. It's a serious thing. And some of the ground service providers or the handlers, they came in, oh, I'm ready for the. Are you sure you're ready for the? Then they will end up with 70, 80, 90 findings. 
it takes them long to do it. If you don't have your manuals in place, your quality manual, your training manual, you, you, your, your security manual in place, up to date, that will take you a long time to do. So, that's what we recommend. And then, bring the station, which is the backbone of ISAGO. This is the backbone of the audit. Bring them in, talk to them about the load control, passenger handling, aircraft ground movement, look around, see what it is. Complete the audit, ISAGO audit records form, and then send it to us. On the website, that's how the website looked like. To apply for it, and you can see schedule, how to schedule an audit, and download, as I, as I said, the standard, the checklist, and you can move forward with that. I hope I didn't bore you too much, but I came to a good conclusion for that. Let's not forget the two fundamental things. It's improving operational safety and driving down the number of redundant audits. And I can say again, it's modeled on the successful of IOSA program that we are very proud of. It. And I say go will establish for the very for the very first time a worldwide benchmark and standards for ground operation. 